know, one of the worst things about Gen Con is getting there. Like, I hate traveling. It always takes forever and you lose like an entire day. Well, good morning, Gen Con. This is weird. I'm coming to you from my backyard. Um, Gen Con's about to start in 15 minutes. We're gonna go and enjoy opening celebrations together. Weirdest Gen Con ever. It's online. The world is so messed up and weird. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't not vlog this one. I mean, I think Gen Con online has just as much merit as Gen Con in person does. Of course, I'm gonna miss everybody. I think a lot of my friends that usually go to Gen Con are, are not coming this time. I think they were just so sad, <laughs> which makes me sad because I really want to see them, even if it is virtual. So hopefully some of them show up. We'll see. An event that had to pivot to online and build entirely new infrastructure, an entirely new way of thinking about how events work, how they should be run, just reimagining everything from the ground up in like, I don't know, when did they have to cancel? I don't remember, like a few months ago, and they had to redesign everything. It's, I, I'm just, it's huge, and there's a lot of pressure. Like my husband, Derek, works on the events team, and 20,000-ish people are probably registered. There's several thousand, 6,000 events, maybe. I don't know the actual number, but that's a lot of people to show up. I don't know if they ever really expected that many people. And that just means that everything's, the, the stakes are so much higher to not succeed here. So I really hope this is going to be a fun event and I'm going to take you guys with me to find out. And uh, we're just going to have a really good con. I'm going to show you what is possible with online Gen Con. And it's going to be a really weird vlog from my house. And uh, just, this is all new for everybody. Be kind. And uh, hopefully we all make some new friends and have some really wonderful, great new experiences at this, this Gen Con. I think it's still gonna be incredible. So let's just, let's just see what happens. Let's, let's discover this together. Are you excited? Mm -hmm. Are you like feeling a little sick? Yep, all right. Derek, you did a great job. We'll find out. You did so much work. I'm very, very impressed. Well, I'm glad and I, I am very excited. I hope that you and everybody else has fun this weekend. Oh, it's starting soon. How much time do I have left? Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Do you want to say anything? Uh, everybody have fun this weekend and be nice to each other. It's happening. It is happening. Uh, yes, so we should probably check in on the Gen Con stream. <laughs> well, starting soon. So, we've got breakfast, we have coffee. Oh, look like it's still going a little bit. Yes. Great, okay. I wonder if they're doing anything else for opening ceremonies. Ah! Hello, welcome to Gen Con Online. I am Peter Atkinson, the chairperson of the board of Gen Con. I am so excited to be welcoming you gamers from all over the world to a groundbreaking version of Gen Con. Gen Con Online. Hi, Peter. Hi, I'm David Hoppy. I am the president of Gen Con. Hi, David. You know, before we open up Gen Con Online, I want to take a moment to thank each and every one of you, our fans, our attendees, our captains, the entire community that has stood by Gen Con while we've struggled through these tough times. You know, whether it's been rolling over your badges or buying great merch like my dragon tea here, um, or just providing words of support, that's that what's really meant the most to us. And that's what's kept us going during these really, really challenging times. 
you know, it's been a tough road for us and for everyone in 2020. In the early part of the year when we were struggling with the, the pandemic and trying to figure out what was going to happen, there were some really scary days and events were canceling all around us. And we started wondering, you know, was there ever going to be Gen Con again? Were we going to be around for the future? And it was gut-wrenching. You know, we finally had to get to that decision where we had to cancel. It was really, really tough. And then, of course, our team, we had to unwind all this work that we put in to, to bring Gen Con to you in Indy in 2020. And those were, those were the darkest days, I have to say. But then we got this idea of, like, how could we do some kind of community event? So we were thinking in April, hey, how can we bring everybody together and do something that was something like a community celebration? And as we were planning this, someone said, you know, we could run ticketed events. And then we started thinking about, well, we could do more with Gen Con TV. We could do merch and we could do social and we could create a store. And it wow, look at all these people from all over the, the world. Gen Con Online was really born. But at the end of the day, it's really you, our fans, who have wow. brought Gen Con to life, Gen Con Online to life. You breathe spirit into everything that we do. You give us the inspiration. And so for that, oh, he's going to make me cry. Team, <laughs> I want to thank you. Yeah, nicely put, David. It's uh, getting a little emotional here. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, one reason oh, it's shit. so heartbreaking to think that Gen Con might not happen this year is because Gen Con has such a long tradition. You know, Gen Con started in 1968 by Gary Gygax in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. It had 96 the person that said it right. And, and here we are over 50 years later. Uh, it's been held not only in Lake Geneva, it's been in venues uh, like Park, uh, University of Wisconsin Parkside, uh, then it moved to Milwaukee, and in 2003 it moved to Indianapolis, where it's been home ever since. Uh, for me personally, my first Gen Con was in 1992 when I was uh, an exhibitor with my new game company, Visits of the Coast. We were all excited, and I haven't missed a Gen Con since. Uh, I love this convention. I, it, it's a part of me at a very deep level. Uh, so when Hasbro decided to sell Gen Con 2002, I bought it. I love that this is the first Gen Con for so many people. Ever since. Wow. Um, what so a the way. idea of Gen Con happening this year, well, that was just something we couldn't let happen. So uh, we decided to go virtual. I, I admit it, it, it took a while to get excited about this. You know, we um, uh, we had to go through, a, I think, a grieving period. Uh, but I'm so glad that uh, David and his team, which I'm so proud of, uh, rallied around this idea. And I am proud of what we're doing here. And uh, it, uh, speaking of which, what are we doing here, David? Uh, so I want to know too. Gen Con Online? Well, yeah. uh, it's exhibitors, it's events, it's streams, it's games, it's goofy dances. You know, really, it's everything that you love about Gen Con, maybe except the will call lines. Uh, and even dragons. Yes. Oh, dragons? Oh, look at this. It's What's happening? Oh my god. Favorite <laughs> what? Dragon. Hey, Genevieve, how's it going? Are you ready for Gen Con Online? Uh, <laughs> Genevieve hey, so, can't uh, talk. what are you going to be doing during Gen Con Online? Are you going to be checking out our merch? Are you going to be buying anything? Like, what's your favorite Gen Con merch? What is uh, that? that would be the, the, oh, is that Genevieve a Genevieve plush. plushie? Of course, of course. Are you going to be tuning in for any of our streams? Like, what's uh, what's on your uh, menu for streams? Mm. Well, first, the dance. Yeah, all right. That's good. You've been busting some moves. Uh, anything else? Are you t participating in any events? This is ridiculous. What is happening? Oh, yeah. Magic is that? Sword. Yep. They're the doing Magic a D&D &D session, and oh. uh, I believe they're doing a live DJ set. That's going to be pretty awesome. Well, here uh, to tell you also... Thank you, Genevieve. So good to see you. Uh, to tell you also about uh, some of the other things that are happening with Gen Con Online, uh, we've got Mike and Kelsey who are going to give us a bit of a tour. Take it away, Mike and Kelsey. Hello, everybody. It's me, Kelsey DeRozier, your community manager for Gen Con Online. I'm here with Mike. Hi, Mike and Kelsey. Uh, I'm Mike Boozer. I am the service manager for Mike. Gen Con. Mike needs a We're mic is what I'm thinking. Uh -huh. how to get a badge and get your events. Sweet. So let's go on over to the Gen Con Online website and take you through everything you need to know. Right. We're going to start with signing up and making sure you have an account because you need one. Oh, this is good information. I was going to cover this later, but if they're going to do it for us, even better. Um, well, you can sign in if you already have an account. Uh, three or days ago. Account. There's a, there's That's a funny. Uh, listing there on how to get an account and sign up for Gen Con. Uh, once you have done that, you want to go over to the left 
to get a badge link and click on that and go. Oh, they must be using like a, Once you've a dummy site. And have a badge, you can then go and grab any events that you want to go to at Gen Con. Yeah, I don't know if you mentioned it, but badges are free. So you can attend Gen Con for free, but events cost money. Oh cool. Let's see if we can focus here. See right here? So like events are like... I think $2 minimum. Okay, let's see the pricing there. That's usually it's usually pretty simple thing to do, but we do have some help for you. We have a couple FAQs. First, we have a. Uh, yeah, I thought it was actually pretty. Pretty. Um, yeah, I thought it was actually pretty simple getting a badge and then signing up for events. It was just like buying a badge normally, except it's free. Ugh. And then I just added events to my cart. Let me turn them down a little bit. Um, but there's a lot of events that are. You know, like play this board game online using like Tabletopia or something. There's play this RPG over Discord or Zoom. Um, and there's also a lot of events that are like being live streamed, like miniatures painting or knitting classes or all sorts of things. And you can pay to be part of that class and be able to ask questions and work along with them. Or a lot of them you can actually just watch and um, because they're all a lot of them are being streamed to twitch and they'll have a link and you can buy a ticket which is usually free if it's just watching um and it's pretty great because you can just watch miniatures painting you won't get the in-depth like instructions but you'll get some information right and um, so i'll let you know what i'm doing shortly reactions here you'll get full access to our server where you'll find a ton of different discussion groups where you can talk about the link for this was like on the home page i think you can find an faq for events and also lots of folks here to help you with any event questions you might have and you'll find a mic over here at our help desk for any during event questions that you'll need to find out in addition to that we also have platform support if it's your first time using many of these platforms like uh, roll 20 fantasy grounds d20 pro or we have a a uh, whole section here for pin training, for the dance party, for the film festival, and a spot for open pickup gaming. If you love the experience, oh, of that's being cute! In Gen Con, I didn't know they were doing up, that. Uh, your favorite game and play it with how friends. neat! Okay, I was wondering how they were gonna get people so sure to group up outside of events. Because sure Gen Con, a lot of the time, is now, not about the specific events, but what happens in between them. Movies, so. It's cool that they've offered a, a meeting so space. Ooh, what's this? Ladies and gentlemen, non-binary pals is the looking glass. You can see nice one, Kelsey. here filled with all of your favorite vendors, exhibitors, offers, the looking and glass. There's a lot of ways you can check It looks like out. my Apple Watch's like app screen. A way to filter and search what you're looking for. it gives me a headache. What is to check out our exhibitors? All you have to do like, is click exhibitors and just How am I gonna like? Exhibitors. If you go up to one of these tiles, you click on like, it. Our exhibitors, our artists, and our authors have made a wait, I mean, I guess I can search, but like, what is for Gen Con this online. tiny square? It also right here. includes uh, like, what is uh, like out look at how tiny this is compared to my thumbnail. Our good friends and, and vendors and exhibitors are doing what? so. Make sure to check out uh, Looking Glass. If like me, you come to Gen Con, you can just zoom in, but I guess you can search. Oh, goodbye. Bye bye. Well, they didn't cover it too well. To I mean, I talked, but um, they were saying that the Looking Glass is Gen Con's version of the Vendors Hall. Our two twenty partners are going to continue with us, roll over in effect, to uh, 2021, and they are. Take this. Uh, take this. Provides a mental resources guidelines. There's always acting or directing. It's so funny. For game developers and the gaming community. Take this is a wonderful and charity. Trinity Haven. Trinity Haven is an Indianapolis-based housing program for LGBTQ youth at risk oh, of homelessness, awesome. emphasizing education, job training, and life skills. And also, uh, special for Gen Con Online 2020, uh, we have proceeds from our event ticket sales are going to I Need Diverse Games. Yes, we do. So <laughs> here is a video telling you more about them. Check it out. 
Interesting. So they're not. Hi, my name's Tanya DePaz. Hi, it's I'm Tanya. Of ID Diverse Games, a Chicago based nonprofit. And what we do is we get people in the industry and hopefully keep them in the industry, be that video games or tabletop. We do things like send people to the Game Developers Conference every year through their scholarship program. We help events like VectorCom, Game Developers of Color, I'm sorry, Game Devs of Color in New York City. And, you know, try to get people in the door and, and get them there. I am also dedicated to getting more people into the tabletop industry, where there seems to be a greater need for people of color, uh, visible and out queer folks. Yes, here, and here. And a place where people can call home. Yeah. And by doing that, you know, we have events. I try to be as visible as I can, both in this space and in the video game space. I want to say thank you for your support of ID Diverse Games. And, you know, thank you to Gen Con for your support this year. It means a lot normally. We'd all be hanging out in Indianapolis, but it's not safe to do so. So we get to hang out virtually this year. So thanks for letting me be part of the opening ceremonies and part of the events. I'll see you on a couple panels and in a couple games. Go Tanya. And I want to leave you with our motto, which is there's room for everyone at the table and pulling sure up is. another chair just means there's more people to roll dice with. So thank you, Jen, yes. and have a good day. Good job, Tanya. We've got 3,200 3, people right now. That's awesome. Peter. It's time to get this online party started. <laughs> yes. You, yeah. you know, you know our big fuzzy dice. I think they're locked away in some abandoned salt mine uh, in Indiana somewhere. Uh, but is there something else that we could do? Yes, oh yeah, do we we will not forego the traditional opening die roll of Gen Con. This is a tradition oh that goes God. Way back to the earliest years of Gen Con. Um, I, you know, usually we're standing How are they in front gonna of do a, this? a big stage uh, in front of the exhibit hall. Uh, many of you out there watching have probably do been not in run. right before we open the exhibit hall. And uh, so I just got to take a moment and imagine that I'm in that exhibit hall. I'm looking around this is at so funny, all the what? smiling, joyous faces. You're out there. I just can't see you. Oh, I'm, I missed run. that. Okay, so Do if you're ready run. for the big opening dice roll, um, we we have our, our dice. David, you got your die? I got a red oh die. My God, what? Okay, we're going to do this funny little move the camera thing. So we're going to blow the illusion. See, there's the big ball. And Okay, so here is, uh, here, here, how are you doing? I'm good. You about ready to go? <laughs> yep. All right, so here we go. The opening die roll. Oh, I got wow. A, I got a five. Oh. I got a one, but you got a five. That's snake eyes. Good. Well, David, I, I think you get a re-roll with a one. Okay. This, this is for That's charity. Oh, my God, roll another one. Yeah. comes again. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go, six. Oh, oh dang. Right. Oh, well, yes. Five. Oh, my goodness. Go, David. Okay, you've got to be careful of those re-rolls. Okay, well, now i got to move my camera back up here and... That's so Reset, funny. Right. I love that they're being so um, and candid and Okay, so the uh, opening die roll results was, oh, that's the wrong way. There we go. Uh, was an 11, which means $1,100 of additional money uh, for the the charity. I think it's for the... Um, I need diverse uh, games. I need diverse games. I, uh, yeah, I need diverse games. I do. So That's awesome. That's great. Okay, so there's our opening die roll of uh, uh, the convention. Um, let's see, when will we see... They're going to see us again on Sunday. Is that right, I David? I think they also Sunday, mentioned yes. um, we'll be live to that close out Gen Con online I, I right wasn't, here I didn't know about this, but they're not charging PM for badges, Eastern so that means Gen Con is making no money excellent, on badge excellent. sales. All right, so everybody, I thought they were making money on their events, show. but it turns again, out it looks like they're donating the all proceeds point, from event tickets to I Need Diverse Games or potentially split amongst the other two charities mentioned as well. But that's incredible. I think it says... Walk, but also a little run, scary for Gen Con a bit. I don't know how they're making money this year. Chanting. I can almost hear you all chanting it. Well, this year, obviously, we needed to do a little something different. Um, and uh, I'm also going to underscore, you know, uh, be patient <laughs> with us. <laughs> We're trying to figure out something we've never done before, just like every other uh, event is trying to do this virtual thing. Hopefully, we do a great job for you. Uh, we, we really want to do a great job for you. Be nice to us, but most important, be nice to each other. Let's all remember we are gamers, and we're all about the love. Donut runs. Oh, my time. God. Whoever right, said Kevin, that is a genius. Uh, sh sh give us our, our safety tip for Gen Con Online. <gasps> oh, my God. No, what? <laughs> this is incredible. What? I thought last year was his last year. He came back from retirement. Hi. How are you? Uh... Didn't expect you to be here. Not here. No one's expected to be where they are right now. We're supposed to be at the best four days in gaming. He's a TK Gen bar? Con in Indianapolis. But we can kind of all get together here. Here on Gen Con Online. So you're probably wondering, hey, Kev, why are you here? 
Didn't you retire last year? Yeah. Well, just when you think you're out, drag you back in. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's the very first online Gen Con. How could I not go? Yeah, that's I right. Mean, I'm going to be just like you, an attendee. I'm going to check it out. I'm going to do some panels. I'm going to do some events. I'm going to play some games. Oh, Kevin. All within the safety of my own home. So, Your home looks kind of cool. Figure, it's like a tiki bar. There's a few safety things that we all have to do to keep ourselves safe. Now, obviously, I can't tell you do not run. But my wife I mean, you told can. me a great one. And that's do not run. That's right. Untrusted apps on your computer. Uh, <laughs> I have a few chores that I got to do. So what I'm going to do is go over all of these safety points with you while I do my chores. Just let me get suited up first. What? Oh my god, what a cutie. Kevin Priest is back. Oh my, oh my lord. I mean, if he loved doing this, I bet you this was like... <laughs> I bet you loved every second of it. What? Oh my. Never share your personal information in public spaces. Never share more than you need to. Good girl. That's a good girl. Come here. Come here. Oh, you oh poopy. No, you're so good. You did a good poop for daddy. Well, <laughs> okay. Good well, poop. too much. Oh, uh, make sure your browsers are up to date. All of your applications, your Twitch, your Discord, they'll have all the latest security features. That way it'll be safer for everyone. I can guarantee you that I did not. You pick up something that's not I exactly did not do that. What is he picking up? Oh, actual poop. Oh, if you ever feel unsafe, we've got your back. All you have to do is get a hold of our customer service Just wave service that poop bag around some more. The email for customer service is customerservice at gencon.com. Pretty easy. For immediate assistance, you yeah. can reach us on Discord at hashtag 100%. help dash desk. One million percent. If you see anything, hear anything, anything, anything that makes you uncomfortable, tell someone. Grade. Giving everybody a little bit of space as you walk around the uh, the event, but obviously this is not the time so, for giving people the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to tell you. Report something up, because if it's happening to you, it's probably walk, happening to somebody your else. Eyes, get enough sleep. Just take some time to stop and smell the flowers. That's <laughs> cute. I think the dog peed over here. <laughs> Kevin. It's very sad. You're at the best four days in gaming. Although we're apart, this way we can all be together. Demonstrate. So, with that, rule number one have fun, enjoy your time, and welcome to Gen Con Online. Yes! Fire! So, it was a fun opening ceremony. I just, they did actually a really good, um, good job of it. But, it's not really a but, but I do have to work today. I took tomorrow off. Um, so I'm gonna work, it's 9 a.m. right now. Their opening ceremony in Seattle started at nine, but it was obviously later over in Indy. So it's probably worth telling you guys what I've signed up so, for so far. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna attend everything. And I definitely wanna add some more things for later today. Oh, <laughs> goodbye eyeliner. Happy made me cry, okay? It's his fault. So, um, first on my schedule was um, opening ceremonies, which we just did. Then there is a sub workshop, I guess, on role playing games for retailers and the community that they serve. That's today. Then tomorrow, it double down on your self safe, self care. So, I don't know, maybe that's like stretching or something. I signed up for that. Then there's a double clicks concert tomorrow. Then there's this event called Batsu. Japanese improv game show and I'm in the audience so I think that's just gonna be really fun and silly like Japanese game show crazy type uh, silly event I think that'll be really fun my friend Matt every year you know Matt I'm gonna insert a picture of him when I see him 
him and I are attending some of these events together. He'll be doing the fire, he, every year he does firefly drinking songs with Gen Con. I didn't realize the music was playing. And he's doing it again this year and this is the first year that I feel like I have the bandwidth to join him. Friday night managing a game store that lasts. That's at 10 p.m. And I work for a game store, so I was very curious to see what their advice would be. Um, then I have Spirit Island on Saturday. And after that, there's a pandemic tournament, which is terrifying. But, I mean, it could be really fun and silly, so I bought a ticket. And then Saturday night is the D20 uh, burlesque show. And I have no idea how they're going to do it. So I'm very curious. I've attended it before in physical form, and it was so much fun. So I'm going to do it again. Sunday, we have an RPG, and the, I, the whole shtick was that you have to go and play with your cat present. I have three cats, you saw them earlier, I don't know if they'll actually be on stream, and I don't know what's involved, but I want to play an RPG with my cats. Who doesn't? Then there's the D20 Dames live podcast recording, the uh, Gen Con costume contest, which I think is just epic that they're doing that online. There's the Table Takes show, which is the show Derek runs, or is on. Um, and then there's Closing Ceremony. If you know anything about me, it's that I love co-op games. I think I've already mentioned it like numerous times in this video. But they are showing off a new um, Pandemic Hot Zone game on Gen Con stream. That's kind of cool. I'm gonna check it out. Six in this, not seven. Uh, so anytime that you get above six is when you would have to reevaluate and discard down or play event cards. Straight just for titles and nothing else might leave you a little lacking in other areas. So we've got it where you can, you know, you can put whatever vampires you need into your deck to make sure that whatever part of your deck isn't all about titles. Look, you've got a little work buddy. Gen Con can't be so bad on it's online. Didn't say that was. Hi. You want to say hi to... Oh. This is Mr. Biscuits, and she is lovely. And she's one of her favorites. Um, okay, Derek. I don't know where we're going to be able to eat. Because, you know, we've got to move at least three blocks outside of the convention so we avoid the lines. Well, good thing that I have you to go take care of that for me. Okay, let's see what restaurant the Guderstein household has got. Derek, what did you get? Also, everybody, it was Derek's birthday like a couple of days ago. Uh -huh. And he didn't get to celebrate because of Gen Con, but we celebrated anyway and he got a lovely gift. Mm -hmm. What'd you get? Uh, we're gonna find out. Well, who's it from? Is this an unboxing? Sure. Oh, it looks beautiful, Derek. You wanna tell us what it is? It's the collector's edition for the new Warhammer 9th edition. What does collector's edition even mean? Uh, means that it had this fancy cover and came in this fancy box. Let me see that. Oh, and it's limited, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Limited to 200 and 2,500, I think. And uh, nope, 2,000. Okay. So I basically just finished work. It is uh, 5 p.m. here in Seattle, and I have an event that started at 7 p.m. indie time, which means that it started at 4 p.m. my time. But it was more of a workshop or seminar type thing, so I'm hoping that. At least I was hoping that I could still get into it. It's a more accessible to people coming in who are kind of curious and don't really know what this game thing is about. So don't Yay, be shy I to consider it. more contemporary, modern RPG options. I did it. Don't I'm pigeonhole here. yourself yes. and just expand it uh, more broadly. Mysteries are, are often very popular. Like and, bubble gum shoe. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's more accessible to teenagers and such. So, so those are definitely something to consider. Um, making those available so it isn't just another D D store, right? D well, actually, I, I did end up getting in, and that was really helpful. I thought that they were just doing a great job um, talking about, you know, diversity and inclusion in gaming um, for a variety of different, you know, different reasons and types of people. So I found that incredibly valuable. But it is now 6 p.m. here in Seattle. 
which means what? It's nine in Indy? Let me see. Time in Indiana. Let's see. 9 p.m. Cool. So I don't have any other events scheduled, so let's see what's going on. Cool. Let's see. Uh, so a selected, uh, let's select all categories. Um, I already kind of messed around with it. I selected um, the day, which is today, Thursday. Um, all categories, Thursday. And I also uh, hi am hiding events that are sold out, have already happened, or are just for children. So we have a bunch of options. It looks like there's 123 things happening. And I've got to be careful because if you look at those start times, in everything's an indie time zone so this stuff is all already started so i need events that are spectator events that start at nine or participation events that start at ten so i'm kind of having a look here see what we've got okay what have we got managing a game store that lasts this could be interesting because i just kind of hang out hopefully i don't do, to do any talking Create, let's create a game for Tabletopia. Oh, that's already started. Working with blues. That could be, it's already started. Never mind. Fear of Green stuff. I think I actually took this class and I was so bad at it uh, a couple of years ago. Ultimate Orwolf. I want to watch but not play. Black is Cole. Join expert Call of Cthulhu keeper Mark Morrison. For a live stream gamed with a cast of talented investigators. So I, oof, so I ended up going for uh, managing a game store that lasts. Because I actually have a ticket for that event also for tomorrow. And I think tomorrow would be a greater chance of me being able to spend time with my friends. And I know they wouldn't be interested in that event. So I switched my ticket to today at 10 p.m. Which I guess is in like 30 minutes, 7 p.m. Seattle. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to watch that. Um, and hopefully it's just like a seminar type thing that I can enjoy and um, let wash over me. So Derek just showed me... So Derek just showed me a little trick. Because um, I keep... Gen Con has three channels. And there's this button called uh, Squad Mode. And I can watch all three of their channels essentially at the same time which is cool okay uh, it's about to start so let uh, let's see what i can learn about managing a game store especially right now it's been or i can spend another two and buy stuff for next week but some things you go through your list will have a set our inventory levels to automatically trigger you know reorder points and stuff which is handy okay well so it's like <laughs> I made it about 30 minutes through how to open a game store or no, how to manage a game store that lasts. It's not bad advice at all. Like, I mean, so here's the thing. I feel like it, the advice he was giving was fairly common sense for the most part. Um, but uh, his energy, I just really wasn't vibing with it. it. It was just, I was getting tired. I need something a little bit more high energy right now. So I made a bad decision. I paid $16 for it. So I made a mistake going to that particular event. Um, but if you are looking to open a game store, potentially that event could be interesting to you in the future. He said he was interested in writing a book about it at some point. It just wasn't going to be valuable to me and I just needed something more energetic. It is 7.30 p.m. right now. So I missed 30, 13 minutes of the start of that stream, that Chaosium stream I was kind of interested in. So... Maybe I'll just bring that up and edit some videos. And I know Derek said he was hungry, so maybe it's time for some food. He would like rice Where is he? There he is. What do you want for dinner? rice the San Francisco tree? Uh, well, it is unclear because they're nowhere near each other's. I just had to turn on the light but I almost forgot about the looking glass I think is what they called it 
which is like Chang Town's online version of the vendor hall. And it looked, let's just look at it. So I wasn't sure about it when I first saw it, but I figured we maybe we should look at it and see because when I first saw it, I was like a little overwhelmed by all of this that is happening. It kind of reminds me of a computer desktop, actually not unlike my own computer desktop that is just a little cluttered and let's see, hang on, how do I even see it all? It's taking some time to load. It's a little stuttery, hang on. Oh, beach ball. Okay. So it looks like my Apple Watch is like app screen. Um, I guess I can like, oh yeah, okay, so it looks like there's some larger icons, which is cool because I can see what I'm clicking on, right, AEG, but once you get like, let's have a look, um, so what's, for example, what's the smallest one, like how am I ever going to know, like what is, what is this, look at this thing, right there, can I even, oh, that's a, uh, the Rook and Raven, they make really cool like uh, notebooks. Yeah, th that's why I'm a little, oh my God, look how tiny this one is. Can you even see it by my mouse? Look at that tiny white little speck. Let's see if, can I even click on that? Okay, no, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to zoom in. I'm not really complaining, right? I bet sponsors paid for um, having a larger icon. I'm just not sure how much value this visual has over this visual and I, I guess maybe it's just a way to feature sponsors um which i understand i don't even know if there are sponsors I, mean, I don't know but i'm not sure how valuable this particular view is to me just as a i'm gonna explore this thing that's a cool artist too just turn on is that a vendor uh, okay, well, actually, let's look over here. We've got artists, authors, charities, exhibitors, and then Gen Con. Well, I want to look at exhibitors. Okay, so it filtered uh, some of the icons out. And then it's just a big, long... Oof. Okay. This is where it gets tricky, right? I mean, I don't think it's a fair comparison, but my only really frame of reference is Gen Con. And comparing Gen Con to online Gen Con is, you know, not fair. This is a brand new, um, this is a brand new show. This is essentially the first year of a brand new show. Oh, well, goodbye makeup. Um, so I don't know if comparing this experience to actually physical Gen Con is fair. Because I'm not seeing what they have, I'm seeing who they are. You know what I mean? So I'm not like walking through the hall and I'm like, neat, I need to buy this. So they did include some pictures here. Um, it's more like... Do I know this vendor and do I care about them? So what I could do is go through this list and then go to everybody's website. Well, that's interesting. How do I get to their website? Okay, let's try this again. Whoa, what? So I wanna go to their website. Okay, great, now it's taking me there. And now I can look at their stuff that they're selling but i just have to manually go to their store and kind of see what they have and i'm i guess i'm also losing out on the opportunity to get a demo except that gen con has for some vendors um added the let's see what the promotional link is oh no nothing um for example the larger one so i don't know who this is wow exploding kittens good job um oh, I'm trying to zoom out. Hang on, this is just gonna take a long time. 
Okay, so take uh, Renegade because they always do a great job. They have given Renegade an opportunity to show a demo, which is almost like somebody at a booth enticing me to come and, and I can explore what they've got. Good Atama. Um, but I guess one of the things I would... Uh, it's so difficult, right? I almost wish there was a way to filter for the things I care about. Which I know is, is rough because a bunch of stories fall into multiple categories, but maybe that's okay. And they may, may be displayed in different categories, but if they could, um, like, what is Ape Games? I don't know. Not, not, I just don't know, right? Um, but I almost have to know that I care about it to see it. I mean, I love Delta Green, but I almost have to know I care about it to then to be taken to the website. I'm just trying to figure out <laughs> a way to do this. Yeah, I almost feel like um, what I would like, and I don't know how possible this is, is that Gen Con categorizes these different exhibitors and vendors in a certain way so that I can filter for cosplay, crafting materials, clothing, um, like board games, card games, role-playing games, all sorts of vendors, right? Books bookstores, board game cafes, some sort of digital thing. I feel like that type of would just help me, help me break this down. I mean, it's what they do with their events and that's what makes looking at their events a little bit more manageable. I'm trying to just find uh, this Ariadne Studios is a place that I visit every year because they do really cool like elf ear type things. And um, let's see if I can get taken to their store. Uh, oh, well, I guess I'm just bad at this. Yeah, so they've got dragon ears. 10.40, so it's almost 11. And uh, Gen Con has wound it down, right? Which is early, you know. Usually I think it would be 2-ish AM and I'd still be editing my videos, which could still happen. Mm -hmm. This is Derek. And... Uh, I, uh, I'm going to close out the vlog pretty soon because mm -hmm. I want to edit this video and get to bed. Mm -hmm. So I guess I wanted to say hi to you Hello. and see how you are and get your take on your first day of Gen Con Online. Things went really well. I'm really tired. Uh, I'm going to try to take care of late event submissions, try to get as many... What does that mean? People who submitted stuff in the past like week. How many are there? Uh, 170. Uh, is there any secrets you can tell us about, like, uh, roughly how many people are even attending or how many events there are? Or is that something that's kind of kept for later? I mean, the number of events, like, you can just download the spreadsheet and find out that there's 6,000-something events. So as of right now, yes. there are 6,756 active events. So almost 7,000 events. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm, yeah, I know. I get it. I get it. Okay? That's fine. Can show it off? Come on. <clears throat> You're happier because we are here this weekend and not away, so there's that. Um, but uh, you know, in in terms of like uh, badges and events and whatnot, um, it kind of feels like we are where Gen Con was. I don't know, maybe like ten years ago. I mean, I'm excited that people who couldn't attend Gen Con previously, um, either well, who can't attend Gen Con either because of the quarantine um, or because they never could attend Gen Con because it was too far, it was too expensive, they didn't feel welcome, they weren't comfortable with crowds, they had mobility, like whatever the concern was, um, now many more people can attend um, and that's fantastic. We have lots of people who this is the first time they've been to Gen Con, the first time they participated. I noticed and all that um, I was watching the opening ceremonies, I don't know mm -hmm. if you were paying attention to the chat, but um, I was so surprised at the number of people that, that were saying that this was their first Gen Con. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's great. I mean, clearly some people were not interested in an online Gen Con. Like, I feel like there's a certain sense of loss that there they're is. feeling. It's, it's different. It's not the same thing. And people who come into it expecting the same thing are going to be unhappy. Yeah. Cool. Well, any more kind of thoughts? How did day one go, I guess? Smooth, but weird. Um, just because it's so different. I'm, it's not what I'm used to. Um, but yeah, it went very smoothly. 
Our moderators on Discord and Twitch were fantastic and took care of almost everything that came up, so I didn't have to worry particularly much. And the streaming team, Lauren and Marcus, and the production folks that they put together were fantastic, and all the streams went off smoothly with yep. incredibly good numbers. Huge improvement I have over to last say year that I'm pleasantly surprised by the length of the roll call line this year. I thought that went pretty smoothly. I think it was a record speed. But one of the things I think I'm missing, and I've got to figure out a way to do it, and I think the Discord is the way to do it, is like that incidental like, oh, there's a there's a human being. I should interact with them because they're playing Pandemic. Um, that's an experience that is difficult to, to mm -hmm. generate um, in this format. There's not that, um, what is it, like impulsive or mm -hmm. uh, incidental like, oh, hello. And like um, that is what the Discord is supposed to provide. Is that yeah, there is it's supposed to provide that sense that you are part of an event that is larger than the individual things you're doing. It's just hard to know where to start. Um, I saw that there's a section of the Discord of like open gaming or, or what is it? Chat. There, there's there's an open gaming area. There's a looking for players area. But if you want that feeling of like I'm at a group, I'm with a group of people who are more than the games I'm in. Yeah. Uh, go to the discussion section, and that's where people are just talking about. Um, the food they're eating, they're talking about the games they're playing, they're talking about they have photos of their pets. I had a conversation with somebody because my Warhammer book showed up. Uh -huh. So we talked about Death Guard. And you talked about that on an open place where other people uh -huh. could chime in. I just feel like I'm intimidated by it. I don't want to do it wrong. So, so, so a little hey, education. Hey, you know, like it's, it's a chat program. You don't do those wrong. Like That's not how it works. But like, Plus, our mods will tell you if you're breaking rules, they'll it, like they'll very kindly I don't want to get sent to Discord jail. So, well, don't be a jerk. You won't get sent to Discord jail. <laughs> uh, but they'll very happily educate you. Just say, "Hey, I'm new to Discord. How does this even work?" And they'll orient you. And then finally, like my personal advice for Discord is: there's a lot of channels. Mute them all, and then specifically decide that you want notifications from this channel or that channel. And I think it's much more manageable. Good night, Derek. Good night. Good night, everybody.